I mean, the, and, and there you, you have this kind of uh, political ethnic connotation with, together with religion, which I think we haven't had 20, 30 years ago in that sense. And also, these young guys are confronted with that. about your observation about the coincidence between Islamist and Orientalist approaches to Islam, a sort of a similar objectification perhaps of Islam in both those approaches. Where do you think that stems from? Is it, is it a modernist approach to the individual or what do you think is behind that? To be honest, if, if I could briefly answer your question, I wouldn't have written the book. <laughs> the book has more than 300 pages and uh, was hard work uh, because this is a, a very complex uh, phenomenon. Um, my argument is that Muslim intellectuals and uh, so-called Western intellectuals, in particular European intellectuals, were not only in discursive interlacements, interaction, but also in personal. So there, in the late 19th century, there appeared a sort of discourse about how to conceptualize an image of Islam. And one of one element, but a very important element, was uh, what the taxi driver could not answer. The idea of Sharia. And for example, Muhammad Abdu also referred to the Sharia in order to define an authentic, also I think a modern concept, an authentic Islamic society. But he also was a theologian. He wanted a religious society. But he interpreted Sharia rather as a sort of moral anchorage and what we would kind of call probably natural law within the tradition of Sharia as a very broad moral, normative and legal discourse. What happened over the 20th century is that both Western scholars and Muslim thinkers strongly focused on the idea of ma uh, Sharia, but also fused it with the idea of positive law. Positive, applicable law by the means of state authority. And this is what something what was part of this mutual discourse. <coughs> where in our textbooks you will find that Islam and Judaism, I think is also called, are legal religions. What are legal religions? Um, you hardly will find in Islamic history not a duality between what political rulers ruled and what Islamic jurisprudential thinkers thought. There was a gap between that. But in the 20th century, a shared notion of Sharia based on a modern concept of law has developed. And it has been adopted by Islamists who today argue that the state should implement Sharia law and then you have an Islamic society. And it has been strongly also advocated as the core of what Islam is as a faith by Orientalist scholars. But you can trace back how this emphasis on law developed in the late 19th century. Yes, it's I just an that, example. I think, I think colonialism also played a role in Oh yes, I mean, who, who, who started in India to administer people according to their religious affiliation? Not the Indians, the Victorians. Clearly. Uh, so Sonia at the core, and here's the last question. <laughs> I wanted to ask you about, uh, about Occidentalism and about whether and how in your research you found that uh, the idea or ideas of the West figured in the, in the self construction of Islamic or Islamist identities. You can say two words about that. I mean, there you also can trace an interesting development from the middle and 19th century. Um, a Turkish colleague has written a very good book, um, Cemal Aydin is his name. 
I do not have some title of the book present, but about how, and this you can also see with Islamic intellectuals, um, people like uh, Afrani, Abdu, mid 19th century thinkers, late 19th century thinkers, they actually were interested to join a kind of universal civilization, certainly from their per perspective. But the ones who were advocating civilization did not let them join. And you have uh, similar developments, not only amongst Muslims, but in Japan, Japan um, in East Asia, um, other studies, where the idea of civilization in the plural developed. That we, we are not one civilization, we are many civilizations, and then certainly starts also a sort of othering of the West. And the West is increasingly, and this even, I think, has Western origins, also um, associated with materialism, um, with a lack of virtue. I mean, conservative thinkers in the West have done that themselves, pointed to, to Western capitalist society as a society without virtues, as a society without morals. And this became a discourse to distance oneself from the West and to picture the own, imagine the own culture as spearheading actually civilization. So when you look at the civilizational discourse and its development, um, this is very interesting as it shifted from the connotation of one civilization where different people wanted to participate in to what later then um, uh, very superficially has been put by Huntington as a clash of different kinds of civilizations. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Dietrich, um, and thank you for coming.